good day. Um, good end of camp. Um, guys are, you can tell the guys are just ready to get moving on Arizona now. So it comes at the right time. Um, I think we had our, our scuffles to a minimum. So, but, uh, guys are just ready to play somebody else. And so we're, we're going to move on to Arizona prep. We'll have our, our majority of our depth chart figured out tomorrow, include the quarterback. All right, questions for Kalani. Mitch, you can go first. Well, yeah, I was going to start there, Kalani. So what's the, the decision then on, on the quarterback? I know Arizona announced their plans just moments ago. They're going to go with a two-quarterback system. Who's going to be your guys' starter for, for that game? Yeah, I think we put, we're put. still camp still going on. Today is the last day camp. And so we're going to go through meetings, go through our, our time to talk to our players, notify them what, what, what the situation is in a lot of different positions. And uh, quarterback will be one of them. So obviously we'll talk to the players first and then be ready to have that um, announced to the rest of you guys tomorrow. Was the decision – um, for the quarterback, for, amongst the staff, you, A. Rod, and, and and Fessy, and the rest of the staff, um, was it decided on, on Saturday, or is or have these practices played a role, more data points for in the evaluation process? No, the decision that was decided is basically what's been going on uh, throughout camp. You know, so the players that have uh, pretty much come out and competed. That's that's the decision making process is up to them. It's not up to me or a rod or fessy or anyone that's it's really the players uh doing what we need um as far as taking that spot and so the, in every spot whether it's quarterback or any of the other positions that we have on our team and that's that's what it comes down to so we're gonna go with the with a player that that uh you know once we talk to them and and, and uh communicate with our guys uh then we'll, we'll be ready to have that be known to everybody else. So the, other than that, we just knew that this was going to be the last practice in camp and came to a point where maybe a little bit before last, uh, before the last scrimmage was to uh, kind of know that this is the, the kind of the deadline. I know I've been asked about that before, but we decided to make this a deadline, give the guys an opportunity to finish out camp and then communicate with them who, who the starter will be. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, Kalani, along those lines, have you identified a scout team quarterback yet, uh, knowing that it's not one of the, obviously, the three that that are in the QB derby? Well, I think it's going to depend on, uh, you know, there's a number of guys that we can use there. So, a Rod's got a bunch of guys that we can use, even a left-hander uh, with Rhett Riley. So, uh, we, we have a bunch of different guys that give us different looks, um, uh, different skill set. So, uh, we're going to use all those guys. Um, and then we'll figure out who, who's going to be the uh, quarterbacks that would travel as well. That, that'll be all f factored out tomorrow. And just kind of a big picture question now that camp is wrapped up. How do you feel about your team? You've said all along you like them, you like your depth. Does that still hold true? And, and what are maybe kind of your expectations this season? Yeah, I mean, I really like our depth. I like the, what, what I've seen through camp. Uh, the chemistry on our team, the connection that they have to, to each other and also to the fan base. And, and uh, my expectations are for our guys to perform at the best. Uh, we, we need to get, get timed out so that we show up there in, in Vegas and that we're performing at our best in all three phases and, and that we have all those guys ready to roll. So uh, right now we went through the dog days of camp, meaning that we had to really grind it out a little bit and had some physical parts and, and really tested a lot of our guys as far as their, their physical ability and also their mental ability with a playbook. And we're able to get most of our install. I would say everything that we wanted in in all three phases is in now. We have a lot of film for it. And now we got to decide what is the best thing where we're trying to predict what's, what we're going to see from Arizona. So um, we'll have to get that in, pl in place. Uh, I think the coaches have been working on a, on a plan already, but now installing that and now shifting from what we're trying to accomplish as a as a team now moving on and now that we built the foundation move on to prepping against our opponent and uh, looking forward to that matchup against Arizona. All right, Jake, go ahead. Yeah, Kalani just wanted to ask you, is there a position group or position groups that you are most concerned about currently? Most concerned about? 
Um, I don't know. I think we get closer to the once we start looking at the depth chart, we can kind of see our depth there and and seeing how the guys perform. Uh, we're, we've got our scout team. There's still some bubble guys on on whether or not we feel like we're completely too deep or if it's still one and a half. So I, I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll start reviewing that a little bit more, but I don't. There's not like a. a I've had concerns other years where it's just like, oh gosh, what are we going to do at this position and have to shuffle so many people around. Now we're, we're doing a little bit of shuffling because there's a lot of experience and guys that, that are pretty smart and know how to play different positions. And that's a more of a convenience than anything. So we're going to keep working with that. And But right now, I, I can't say that there's a position that I, I'm really concerned about right now. And then health-wise, do you have any season-ending injuries at this point or are you relatively healthy? We do. You know what? I We did have one season-ending injury, and that was uh, Braden Cosper, our receiver. And so he, he had um, – he, he got hurt, and I, I wanted to, I, I totally forgot that when I re, when we happened a few days ago. So uh, he had surgery, and, and he's going to be recovering, and he's uh, back with the team in meetings and helping the guys out. He's going to be basically coaching and, and keeping trying to be a leader that, that he's been for us all year long. So that's the unfortunate um, situation that we have right now with him being down. He, uh, you know, made a great catch and, and came down on it wrong and, and – and so he's out for the year. That, that, other than that, everybody else is still in play for the first game. There's still some guys that got banged up during camp. We had a physical camp, and so we, we've got some guys that are banged up, and we'll start. Right now, they're all in play for the game, though, so they're all in play for for Arizona. We'll just have to see when we get closer to the game how uh, if, if, if those guys will be ready to roll. Okay, Sean, and then Dana. Yeah, Kalani, you, you mentioned uh, a lot of observations after, or you guys mentioned a lot of observations after Saturday's scrimmage and wanting to kind of check the film and, and all of that. Did, when you went back and looked at the film and as you start to put the final bow on fall camp, did did a lot of what you saw on tape kind of confirm what you guys have been seeing for the past couple of weeks and kind of with your own two eyes and that sort of thing, or, or have other things sort of stuck out to you, I guess? In, in regards to the, just, the, just the everywhere. team talent? Yeah, just everywhere. Kind of just observations that you're making, I guess, in person versus on tape, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the the newcomers to the team uh, really add a, a, a different level for us. And then uh, well, I think sometimes we lose sight that, that a lot of these guys that are returning on the team um, are going to be the same, and 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 a lot of them have improved their game even from last year. So that's, to me, that was the more surprising and and kind of revealing thing is that uh, we have, you know, everyone keeps reminding us how many people we lost to the NFL and lost through graduation, and and um, and so you kind of are looking to fill those pieces, but then you start to see that these guys that are here that return that they have actually upped their game. And um, that was really impressive for me to see. And those guys worked extremely hard in the off season, and saw a lot of improvement from, um, you know, from all through camp. And then, uh, I mean, guys like Neil Paul who come to mind, and and Gunnar Romney. There's a lot of guys, old linemen, Blake Freeland and Harris Lachance, have done amazing jobs. Um, James Empey's a much better version of himself. He's done some really good things. That change his body. He looks really nice and. Um, and, and just really, he's always been smart, but he's just he's just leading at a different level right now. So I, I want to make sure that uh, you know we don't take those guys for granted because they're, they're they're a big part of our team, and 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 it's been really uh, nice and rewarding for me to see them uh, even get better from from last year, which I thought they were pretty good last year. Hey Kalani, outside of uh, quarterback, which I know you love talking about every day, um, is there are there other position battles that are really close one two or is your your ones mostly separate from your twos right now um i think we got i think there's a good number of guys that, that we we know are probably more than it being a one and two the quarterback one's a little different because you want to have a starter um you want to have one of them in place um the the others you can kind of rotate them through so you know we have uh tyler algier and lopini katoa that that rotate at, at running back. And then you add a bunch of the guys that are back now with um, Ropati and McChesney and um, Fakahua. And, and I mean, there's a, I don't know, I'm forgetting people, but there's a good group of guys there that, that adds to the mix. 
Um, so I, I wouldn't say that that really there's a separation between one and two. There's a lot of twos that uh, show that they can earn some time. I think Ben Bywater's done that as a linebacker. D line, it's uh, everyone keeps saying it's a, not a lot of big names, but we'll find out, right? There's a, a lot of guys that I think can perform and do some really good things, and there's a lot of returners there that that um, I think some people are overlooking. So hopefully, this is their opportunity to show what they can do. And then um, I don't know if you got a chance to watch Tony Finau win yesterday. I know you're friends with him. What was your reaction? And kind of what does that mean for, uh, you know, the Polynesian community here to have a PGA tournament champion like that first time in five years? Oh, it's huge. I mean, that, so proud of him. You know, he's worked really hard. And I remember um, when he was – when him and Gipper were just kids and, and just, you know, them hitting golf balls in their garage and stuff like that and then to see them – you know, on primetime TV to see Tony doing his thing. Uh, uh, it's amazing, you know, and, and that's uh, it's just it was really cool to see him. I, I think the uh, there's and it's not just the Polynesian community, but the, but the local community in the state of Utah and everyone's just so really excited for him. And, and it shows how united we all are, even though we, we, we may have different college teams that we, you know, we go to. But it's nice that we can rally around someone as, as genuine and as real as Tony Finau. All right, last two questions, Mitch, and then Bryce. Yeah, Kalani, just uh, COVID-19 still playing a role in college football today. Uh, what's the plan for players that aren't vaccinated in your program? Will BYU be providing those one to three tests per week that the NCAA is requiring? Yeah, um, we, we had our um, sports medicine department. We, you know, Carolyn Billings did a great job communicating with our players the, the situation and so she she's the one educating our guys we're going to do the same type of protocol that you're seeing from a lot of the um, p5 programs and, and conferences so um, I'm sure somebody else can probably give you that information I'm here to talk about football but we're got we gotta you know we're gonna do whatever we can to get get to the game safely and and uh, and that means following different protocols and policies to do that we'll do it and just real quick follow up uh the NCAA require, has like a 10 day isolation period. It's 10 days till you guys travel. Do you have any players currently in isolation? No. Yeah. Thanks, Claudia. Was that okay to say that? <laughs> so, if I wasn't supposed back. to say that, I'm sorry. If, if, if I wasn't supposed to say that, then, but it's no is the answer. <laughs> so, kind of going back to a uh, question prior asking like what was probably the position group you were worried the most about what's the position group that probably showed you the most during training camp that like you weren't really expecting i like the quarterback quarterback group and running backs and so i probably should name a lot of them, most of the position groups I, I i was impressed with the um improvement our second o-line made and so um yeah, it, and until you get to test them in, in a real game, it's always hard to say. And then, what well, you don't, you hope you don't. Hopefully, you don't have to test your depth too much in in, in these games. So, yeah, I just you now we, we got to get to the game, and, and then we can talk about more things specifically. But until then, it's all I don't. Know, I can't forecast that right now. My goal is to get the guys to be at their best. That's the goal. So, also another question I had um, was how hard is it for some of the guys to maybe not look past Arizona, but also think about that the second week game against Utah. We're not worried about anything but Arizona right now. So all our focus is on, on the Wildcats and that game in Vegas. That's all we care about. 